Hi, and welcome to this video. My name is Edgar Kautzner, and I'm the Managing Consultant at Monera. This is the second video in our Data Warehouse Automation series, and what I'd like to cover today is an introduction to Data Warehouse Automation. In the previous video, we covered an introduction to data warehousing. We covered what data warehouses are, how they deliver business value, how they're structured, and how they're used. In this video, we're going to talk more about the development of data warehouses, and in particular, give you an introduction to data warehouse automation and how it delivers significant value to organizations. Let's first talk about what's involved in developing a data warehouse. To start with, organizations often have data sitting in various locations. This includes operational systems, where the data isn't structured for reporting, in Excel or CSV, or perhaps in the cloud in some form. We need to get the data from these sources into our data warehouse where it's structured for reporting. This is done by writing code to extract the data from the sources and loading it into a temporary location. The data is then transformed into a format suitable for reporting. This process also includes quality control of your data called cleansing and also data integration. The data is then made available in the data warehouse, structured in an optimum way for reporting purposes. This whole process is known in the industry as ELT or ETL. That stands for Extract, Load and Transform or Extract, Transform and Load. Now, traditionally, all of the code for the ELT or ETL process was written from scratch. So let's now talk about some of the problems with traditional data warehouse development. So traditional data warehouse development was very time consuming. It required a lot of manual coding and the ELT coding accounted for about 70 to 75% of the total project time. And really that took, is far, far too long. Projects took months. As a consequence, users had to wait too long to get the information they wanted. It was also error prone. So due to the manual coding, it was very, very easy to make mistakes and very difficult to find and fix errors. It was also very costly due to the development resources and the time taken to uh, complete the projects. And coding accounted for 70 to 75% of the project costs. So projects often resulted in failure, mostly due to budget overruns, slow delivery, and low perceived value with stakeholders. Above all, users were really frustrated. It just took them way too long to get the information they wanted. So what's the solution to this problem? So you might say that data warehouses are bad. Let's stop using data warehouses. But this isn't the right solution because data warehouses provide a tremendous amount of business value. The problem was that we were doing it wrong. There was a mismatch between traditional data warehouse development and the evolutionary nature of analytics development. And I'll cover evolutionary development shortly. There were three main problems that are specific to analytics development. Firstly, users don't know whether they want something until they've actually seen it. We need a different approach where we can release in increments and make changes based upon user feedback. And if we built most functionality in one go, we'd run a very high risk that the output would have very little value to the business. So we need an approach that delivers functionality rapidly in short iterative cycles. Secondly, user requirements change once they start using the analytic system. And if you don't respond to those changes, people will stop using the system and it will lose value. Thirdly, manual coding just takes far too long and costs too much money. So let's now look at an alternative solution. So this is a combination of using an evolutionary analytics development methodology with data warehouse automation. So firstly, let's talk about what evolutionary development is. Evolutionary development is a constant cycle of requirements gathering, rapid prototyping and review and it aims to deliver functionality incrementally in short release cycles. The evolutionary approach allows development of analytic systems that deliver value in a shorter time frame and have a tighter fit with organizational decision-making requirements. The problem is that the evolutionary approach is extremely difficult with traditional data warehouse development methods because manual coding just takes too long. So we need to use data warehouse automation to solve these problems. So data warehouse automation does a number of things for you. First of all, it allows you to deliver data warehouses rapidly and make incremental changes. And how this does it is to automate much of the design, build and maintenance of your data warehouse. 
So you can pull data from virtually any source or cloud-based platform and deploy new functionality rapidly in days and weeks, not months and years. It also dramatically reduces the development costs. So as all of the development using data warehouse automation is metadata driven, minimal coding is required. And as such, fewer ELT developers are needed and a high quality solution can be delivered in a very short time frame. Another benefit is consistent high quality code and automated documentation. So your data warehouse automation platform will build the entire ETL process by combining metadata that describes your data warehouse with industry best practice design patterns. And this results in high quality, consistent and error free code with auto generated documentation. Next, data warehouse automation gives you your choice of data warehouse platform. So one of the problems with traditional data warehouse development was that after you had spent all this time writing the code to extract data from your source systems to your destination data warehouse, you were more or less locked into your data warehouse platform. So if you're using SQL Server, for example, to house your data warehouse, and you wanted to move to a cloud-based platform like Amazon Redshift, it would take you months or perhaps years to rewrite all the code from scratch. With data warehouse automation, the transform logic is built in using metadata and then the data warehouse automation platform will use this metadata and logic to write the specific code required for your target data warehouse platform. So if you want to switch to a different platform, the data warehouse automation tool will rewrite all the ELT or ETL code for you and rewrite it specifically so it's optimized for the new platform. Another benefit is that data warehouse automation allows you to export metadata into a data visualization tools such as Yellowfin, Power BI, Click or Tableau. And this allows you to analyze your data immediately and save time in report development because you don't need to add all your fields in. And the output of all of this is that functionality can be delivered rapidly and incrementally and fully support the evolutionary development methodologies we spoke about earlier. Also, development costs are a fraction of what they were with less financial risk around data warehouse initiatives and a far higher return on investment. And also dramatically reduced risk. So a mitigated risk of project failure, far greater stakeholder engagement because the output is more tightly aligned with their requirements and overall far more business value and a much higher return on investment. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've given you a good understanding of data warehouse automation, at least at an introductory level and the associated benefits. In the next video, I'll use the Agilius data warehouse automation platform to build a data warehouse from scratch. So you'll be able to see a practical example of the technology in action. So stay tuned for that. If you'd like to hear more about Monera and how we can help you make more informed business decisions, feel free to visit www.monera.net to get in touch with us. My name's Edgar Kautzner. See you in a future episode.